Welcome back to the Meeple Marathon. Today we're going to take a look at how to play Champions of Midgard solo. So, um, need my solo deck of cards first. Uh, essentially, what um, several people on BGG have created is uh, solo variants uh, to control AI player. And um, in some variants, the AI player simply just blocks your locations and you are playing a high score version of the game. And in um, other versions, uh, for example, this one, you are playing where you uh, the, the dummy player is actually going to score glory points throughout the um, campaign, throughout the game. And that's what we're going to play today. So this um, specific variant that I'm about to show off here uh, was created um, by a gentleman on BGG and I will put his information and a link to his uh, these cards and everything in the description below. Um, so let's first talk about how his the, the solo AI is going to work here. Then I'll talk about how to set up the board and then we will talk about um, how to actually play the game um, and, and show off how the solo AI is going to work. So uh, what he has done here is taken a variant um, from another individual who basically just created these cards to put have the AI go to specific locations. They would block you from getting the job done there, but at the end of the day, it was all just a beat your own score mechanic. So um, what he did was make it so that the... Um, there were rules for how the solo AI actually handled fighting the troll, Draugr, and monsters, which is the main way to score glory in the game. He also gives out glory various other ways. So uh, I'll put a link to these cards in the description below. I simply just printed them out on cardstock and then went ahead and sleeved them uh, just because it makes it easier for me to shuffle. The only thing other than printing these out that you will need is a uh, preferably a D4 um, because that's what the the variant asks for. If you don't have access to a D4, you could use a D6 and just re-roll anything that lands on a 5 or a 6, but a D4 is the uh, true way to go here. So, and they're, you know, pretty easy to find, easy, cheap. If you have a friendly local game store, go go check one out there. You can probably buy one for 50 cents or something like that. But anyways, so he's got these cards and there's some various ones that we need to take a look at first. So he has most of the cards have this infinity symbol on them. That means they're going to start in the deck from the very beginning. But you do need to pay attention that, for example, the worker huts card here, it just says set up one per dummy player. So this variant actually allows you to play with um, multiple dummy players against you. So if you were playing solo and wanted to play a three player game, you actually set up two dummy players here and it is doable. And you just use the same deck, just certain cards like the Worker Huts card, you're gonna have two of those in the game instead of just one. So you can see here, I pulled out, um, you know, there's the two other Worker Huts card. It's a one to four or two to four player game. So there's only ever gonna be three dummy players in the game. So. That's what these are. I pulled these out um, because they. I'm simply playing a me versus one dummy player game. So I went ahead and pulled those out. And so I have all my infinity cards, cards that are always gonna be in the deck in there. <clears throat> then there are these cards that say two plus, three plus, five plus, and six plus. These are basically going to be uh, sending the AI out to fight monsters and also to buy ships. Now, the reason you're not going to add these in to begin with is that it's tough to go fight a monster um, right off the bat. So they're saying that as the game ramps up, there's going to be more and more options for them to go fight monsters because that's the way uh, you kind of have to build up your army and then you go and fight them. So. The designer, who does have a video online, and I'll put a link to the description below um, to his video, he actually plays against three other dummy AI, so he plays a full game. Uh, he basically just mixes all these in to begin with, and if it's not the right round, he just keeps drawing. I like to take these and set these off to the side. I put them in order. You can see all my two pluses are at top, then three, then fives, then sixes. When I move the round marker, I look to see, do I need to draw some cards to add to the stack? Yes, I do. And that helps remind me to shuffle as well. So 
all we're basically going to do with these is shuffle them up and then create a draw pile for our uh, solo AI actions. So there you go. The only other thing that um, that's included in his printout is just some setup and rules cards. So I actually have these double sided here. So here's just a reminder of to pay attention to the setup rules. And then uh, he basically goes through all of these rules that I'm going to explain here in a second. And um, this last one is very important. So destiny cards which I just realized is the only thing I have not gone ahead and taken care of. All right, many of the destiny cards, which happens to be one of the ones I just drew, for me this says have the most red enemy cards at the end of the game. Now, the solo AI player is not going to collect any monster cards, Draugr, monster, whatever. They don't worry about that. I, however, am going to collect them because if I can collect sets or if I can collect red ones, I will gain more points at the end of the game. Since I'm playing against someone who's not collecting their monster cards, I could easily just have one and say I have the most. Well, that's not fair. So what he's saying here is that if any of the destiny cards refer to having the most of something, you have to have at least three of that something. So there's even some where I played last game, it was like have the most workers, which are represented of these dice. I mean, warriors, which are represented by these dice at the end of the game so I needed to make sure I had three warriors still on my player board when the game ended I couldn't just send everybody off to fight at the end of the game I had to reserve some in order to score that destiny card against the AI and then the last thing is just this combat rules this is pretty handy to have keep in front of you until you have kind of memorized the rules but basically he's always going to defeat the troll and the droggers um, you roll the d4 to see if you get the blame or not and then he basically whether he defeats the monsters or not determines whether or not his journey card is all quiet or not and then if he rolls a four he actually doesn't defeat them i'll explain all of that when the time comes so usually i keep this setting off to the side keep it handy um, so i can just remember to look at that all right so that's all of the uh, solo variant stuff that you need to pay attention to other than that you're going to set up your game exactly like a in this instance, a two-player game. Uh, if you were playing with uh, two or three uh, solo AI bots, you would set up for however many people are in the game. So there are two factions in this game, so I'm gonna set up, I have set up for a two-player game. So let's go through um, what we have here. Way up at the corner of the board um, that is kind of cut off are markers just like these, and those are our glory point point tracker markers. So you set those up. The other ones that you'll see you set on your player board to remind you of your color. I guess some people forget so they felt like that was necessary. And then you're going to take your colored worker meeples of your color. In a two player game you actually get to take four instead of three at the beginning of the game. And then you're each going to place one here on the worker hut that you'll have to pay to hire later. Alright moving down the board you want to make sure you have your time tracker uh, token on the one space. And then you shuffle up all your troll cards, stick them here. Shuffle up all your Draugr cards, stick them here. Basically, you're just shuffling up all the various decks and putting them out. You're going to shuffle up all your rune cards, place them here, and deal out two into these two spaces here. Then you're going to shuffle up your Sage House cards. These are your Destiny cards, and everybody does get one, at least a human player. All human players get one to start the game. You're going to take your two public longships. So you can see these are both have public in the name. And then I've got two off camera here, which are available for sale. There's actually four, but the other ones say for three and four plus players. So we don't include those in a two player game. Um, so these are set in these specific spots here. You'll see it says public longships. These are your journey cards. You uh, shuffle those up, place them in a stack. And these are your monster cards. Shuffle them up, place them in a stack. Merchant cards, shuffle them up, place them in a stack. And then last but not least, you are, depending on your player count, going to add a certain number of economic and military market stall cards. So you can see that these four locations are actually um, blank because they are actually going to change uh, throughout the game based on uh, you shuffling up and choosing however many of these you need to add. So in a two-player game, it's one of each. Um, for example, in a four-player game, you would have two of each, 
a three player game I believe it's two economic and one military but so I shuffled those up the other ones you don't need you can throw them back in the box all right <clears throat> so to prepare uh, also each human player gets one of each resource essentially one food one wood one glory one coin and one swordsman die which is the white die and also one destiny card which I have off to the side here normally you would not have your board sitting on the actual game board like this but I'm doing this in order to uh, allow everyone to to see everything so all right at the beginning of every round including the first round you need to uh, fill in uh, some spaces and uh, on the board to, to get the board ready for the next round so starting from top to bottom here you're going to add in a new troll and two new draugers so that means that even if nobody fought the troll or the draugers during the previous round you're going to clean those out and refresh those all right you're also going to move the time marker over after the first uh, when it's not the first round then these blue locations that are here in the middle are going to have something added to them so basically the three warrior dice and then food that means that if somebody doesn't claim something here you're still going to add in a second maybe third i've seen these get all the way up to five uh, in the solo ai game because they're just not taking it and i don't need them normally in a human player game if it gets up to like three somebody's going to take them because it's it's free warrior dice essentially but at the beginning of every round you're going to add one of each um, even if there's already one there you're going to flip over your top merchant ship card and so that's up for display so that's going to change every round you're going to fill in any blank journey card spaces so if someone did not journey to a specific column you are going to leave those be but anything that's empty you're going to fill this last one does not get filled because it's for four players only same thing with the monsters here so we're going to fill in three brand new monsters and if there were any monsters left behind that didn't get defeated you would add a coin to them and again that's basically at the start of round two and on all right so we have done all of the setup that we need to do setup is very simple very straightforward there's a lot of cards um, but they each have their spot on the board which is very obvious and they're, you know, they're easy to shuffle up it's just shuffling and, and putting them out all right so to play a game of Champions of Midgard in a normal game everybody sits around the table starting with the first player which me I get the first player token um, to start off with and I get to choose anywhere I want to go and um, there are some locations where I simply go like the Smokow any of these blue locations or any of these locations where I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna take what's there so especially these in the middle, I just go and I take everything that's there. These market stall places, the generous merchant is just going to give me a wood and a food. Whereas the military one, I have to pay. See, it's in front of the colon. It's not very obvious, but you can like see it better here. I have to pay a wood to gain two red dice. Um, over here, I have to pay a wood to gain one of these cards. I could also draw the top one there. These are not only going to give you VP, glory points, which is the circles. Um, they're also going to give you a one-time kind of awesome ability. You basically just read the card. If you go to the Sage House, you can look at any one of the face-down journey cards, which is highly recommended if you are going to go there, um, so you can understand what kind of weather you're going to be dealing with. But you also get to draw another Destiny card, which could give you uh, additional points at the end of the game. So that's kind of all of the places in the middle here. Uh, you could also, last thing, you go to the shipwright, which basically means you spend whatever is on the ship card, for example here, two wood and two coins. You then own this ship. It's not public, only you can use it. So you never have to worry about somebody beating you to a public long ship. You just have to worry about somebody beating you to a location. Also, you have to pay a coin to use the big public long ship that has a 10 capacity. The small one is free. All right, so these areas in the middle are how you are going to be getting your warrior dice that you need to fight, your food that you need to feed your warriors with, and your wood that you're going to use to buy rooms or build boats, things like that. Um, you can also go to the stave church, which means you can 
purchase uh, glory tokens. Glory tokens are VP at the end of the game, but they also allow you to re-roll dice in combat. You can go to the market here and trade food, coin, and wood for it. any of those other things, one-to-one -one ratio. You can go here and get the first player token, and it's also going to give you a single um, white die. So everything in the middle is all like the building up your army. Uh, typical worker placement, you put your worker down, you get something there. Um, the worker huts allows you to get a fifth worker in this instance, but you have to pay for it. So the first person to hire a worker pays five, then four, then three, then two. So if I'm lucky, it, it depends. Um, because if the solo AI goes there first, they're actually going to have um, more or equal amount of actions as me for the entire game or longer. But it's also going to make me one coin cheaper, which we'll see. All right, the other places other than the middle of the board here that you can go to are places that you're going to uh, handle combat in. So you can either go to fight the troll, which basically means you just put your worker meeple there and that's it for now. Or you can say, I'm going to go fight one of these two draugers here. Or you can put yourself in a long ship, either a public one or one you have purchased, and sail into one of these spots saying, I'm going to fight this monster. Now, the troll is going to A, give you wood, the draugers are going to give you coins, and the monsters are going to give you glory. They're all, I mean glory tokens, they're all going to give you VP, and the monsters definitely down here are going to give you the most. So 8, 13, 14, 3, 6, and 4. The troll also is like this menacing being that messes with your village every turn. So. Either somebody goes to fight the troll or everybody's going to get blamed for leaving the troll be. So if you fight the troll, you can give a blame back to the supply, which blame is negative points. And it's like a growing scale the more you accumulate, but not until the end of the game. So you can not only get rid of blame, but you can also assign it to someone else. So if there's somebody else in the game in this instance, it's always going to be the uh, opposing player. Um, I could keep them in check by, by giving them blame. Um, other than that, the only other thing that is important about uh, who you go to defeat, other than who's easier, harder to defeat, is the colors. So the trolls are gray. They don't ever, you don't ever collect them. You just fight them and then you'll put them in the discard pile. But for the draugers, you can see there's a yellow one and a blue one. And for the monsters, there's two reds and a yellow. For example, I wants to, especially playing solo, have defeated at least three red monsters by the end of the game. That includes draugers or monsters down here, red enemies, it says. Um, so if I defeat the Lindworm here, I don't, I'm not gaining towards my destiny card, but you also get five VP for every set of red, yellow, and blue monster enemies you have at the end of the game. So diversifying your colors works well too. Beyond that, you when you place your worker somewhere, say I am going to take my public longship and I'm going to sail here. All you're doing is um, securing this position. Nobody else can come here. You don't actually assign your Vikings to this boat until the end of all the worker placement, which allows you time to recruit your workers. Then once you do, you need to place the amount of workers you're spending and the amount of food that you're going to use to feed them on their journey. Now, this is only down here. When you go up there, all you simply need to do is send the dice. But when you have to sail across the oceans and fight the bigger monsters, you're going to have to feed them on their way. So if you put a worker there, you simply put the amount of dice that you want to spend up there during the assigned Viking step, and then all combat always goes from troll to draugr down to monsters. Monsters, however, you need to be able to feed your Vikings. So you can see here these first two locations, one food is going to feed two dice, basically two Vikings. Um, but the further away from uh, the shore you get, or from your village, the further across the sea, the less food um, be is worth. So here, one food is only going to feed one Viking. All right. These journey cards could mess with your food. They could mess with your Vikings. So you always either want to know exactly what you're getting into by having peeked at it, 
or you probably want to overpack, send more Vikings and more food than you feel like you need. Once you have made the journey, or in the Draugr or Trolls instance, you just automatically start there, you're going to roll out your dice. All right, all the Vikings that you brought. And this is a pretty good roll, because what this is saying is that I got one, two, three, four hits. Most of these uh, monsters are only going to take three hits, so this would kill off any monster easily. It would easily kill anyone down here. But the monster's always going to get to hit back. So you may have hit it for three, but it's hitting you back for two. And every dice only has one health. So every round of combat, it's hitting for two. So even though you defeated it, and you're still going to defeat it, you still get the points, you still get the tokens, it's still going into your um, pot of gold here, you're going to have to get rid of two Vikings. You lose them. This one, however, gets to come back to your player board. Now, if you happen to roll shields, like so, say for example you took four Vikings and this was your roll, and you were fighting the Lindworm here in the red, you would have hit it for three, one, two, three, and you would have blocked two. So you actually, all four of these guys would get to come back to your play. They'd all get to come home. Anytime you spend food though, it always goes, whether you overspend or not. But this, the way you block with shields and hits with the number of weapons you see works for every single enemy out on the board. Now, if I happen to have, say, just rolled this, and I'm fighting the Lindworm, and I hit it for two, and I blocked it for two, I didn't lose any dice, but I didn't kill it, that's where these tokens come into play. You would put your two hits on the Lindworm, and then you would get to roll again. So we would roll like this, and it would say, okay, well, I got the one hit I needed to defeat it, but I didn't get any blocks, so he's taking these. Or you always have the opportunity to spend these glory tokens to reroll any amount of dice. So one glory token allows you to reroll any number. I guess you would be hoping for that. Um, once you've spent it, it just goes back to the supply. So that is fighting in a nutshell. It's very straightforward, but as long as you have Vikings, and yet have not defeated, say you just keep rolling shields, and this is your roll, and then you roll this again and again and again. You just keep fighting until you have either lost all your Vikings or you have defeated the um, monster. And all the dice, I'm pretty sure, are the same. The only reason there's a difference between axes, spears, and swords is that some monsters do not, for example, allow you to use axes, or there's going to be some that say no spears or some that say no swords so that is it uh, in a nutshell that's how you play champions of midgard so let's go ahead and play a couple rounds that way you can see how the uh, ai plays how a human player would play and then if you care to see the end of the game you can check out my extended playthrough check out the final score see if i am able to defeat the solo ai and claim glory and victory in Champions of Midgard. All right, so again, I always start with the first player here. And what do I need to do? I do like to start things off by uh, not being in the negative and blame. So I'm actually going, ooh, but that is a tough troll to start off right off the bat. Um, okay, so just in case, I want to make sure I have a decent amount of fighting squad, so I'm going to go here. I'm going to spend my one wood, but I'm going to get two spearmen out of it, two red dice. They go on my board here. I can never have more than eight warriors uh, in my possession. All right, so I have gone, and while I'm sitting here, I realized I don't know if I shuffled up my stack of AI cards. So I'm going to give them a quick shuffle here, and then we will flip one over for you. All right, so the solo AI, I'm gonna use this spot to hold their card. They're going to the Stave Church, which is right here, and they're simply going to score one glory. So I gotta go way up here and move their marker over. All right, but they don't actually trade in, and they don't collect anything except blame tokens. So they're not gonna do this conversion of money to glory tokens. They just have blocked that spot for me. And since we are going head to head, they get to score one glory. So it's back to me. Um, all right, I'm feeling pretty good about 
this. I do need some red though. So uh, I'm gonna go up here and say, I am going to fight the troll, nobody else can do that. That's all I do for now. All right, so they are going to the worker huts. They're, they're knocking this out very early. I don't know how they got their money to do that, but they basically are going here, they're paying their five, and this guy immediately becomes available. And uh, if this dummy player and no other dummy players have any more meeples to gain, remove this card from the game. So they don't need to keep going to the worker hut. It wouldn't make sense for them to. So that card is now removed because they went there, they got their extra worker, now they're done. All right, so back to me. Um, things are moving rather quickly here. Um, I could, nope, I spent my wood. I can't go there. Um, that would be a nice spot. What's nice about uh, each hero, Viking, um, whose player board you use has a special power. Mine happens, I'm playing with Gilfer here, who is the Seaworthy, and he actually does not have to pay to go to the merchant ship. Normally you have to pay one coin to get whatever is up here. Uh, so I feel like it's pretty lucrative for me to just try and steal this spot every time. So I'm gonna go there and get my wood and two food for free. All right, just back to the solo AI. They're going to the market stall. So normally you would roll a D4 to see which one they're gonna take. But in this instance, there is only one for them to take. They do, however, get um, one glory simply for using the market stall, I guess. I don't know. There are some uh, economy ones that give you glory points, so I guess that's why. All right, so this is my last turn. I don't have um, four coins. Pretty sure I need all of these guys to um, fight later. So what I'm actually going to do, hmm, no, I don't want to do that so early. I want to go to the Draugr spot. So I guess I'll just go up here and take the fourth guy, just to be certain I defeat that troll. Okay. Now the solo AI is going to get to finish out. Swordsmith, look at that. So anytime he can't go, I've already been there, and he can't put his worker there, he just draws another card. Fight the troll. He can't do it. I'm already there. Uh, mark it. He's going to go here, and again, he gets one glory. So I don't know how the person who created this solo variant decided on that balancing things out, but it does work. Um, most of the time I defeat the AI, but I also have included the easy cards. Um, some of them have been rather close. So fight the troll, also not available. Fight the Draugr, okay, place dummy meeple on the highest glory Draugr. So he's going to go here and then that's it. All right, so we have spent all of our workers now. So now it's assign your Vikings phase. So your Vikings are representative of your dice. You can send as many as you want, but remember, uh, trolls can kill them, um, but obviously you want to make sure you defeat them. So I'll actually send all four of mine to defeat this troll. Hopefully most of them are going to come back, if not all of them. The AI does not have dice to place out, so they just don't do anything at this point. All right, so for me, I'm going to go ahead and just bring this guy back, and I will roll out my four dice here. Let's... Stick this right here, keep everything from knocking stuff around. And wow, really poor roll on my part. So I'm going to spend my one glory token I started with and re-roll these guys. Oh my goodness, are you serious? Okay, so maybe I won't be using this dice tray. All right, but we're not done yet. So I actually put one damage on the troll and uh, but he's going to kill off one of my people so it really doesn't matter to me at this point so i'll just pick one all right but i still have vikings the troll is still alive so i'm going to simply pull these out right here see if we can't do any better okay so i needed this the first time i've hit him for four and again he's going to hit me back for one you 
are not a very good warrior because you didn't do anything, but I get my two back. And so I have defeated the troll. That means I get to remove any blame if I had any. I don't, but I get to give the solo AI one right off the bat. I get a single wood on my player board and I get four glory. So you will hop over him there. And then this, since it's a troll, is simply discarded. All right. Then moving over, uh, basically he is defeating the yellow one outright. He doesn't have to do anything. He doesn't collect any coins, but he is going to collect six VP. So he goes up to nine. And again, he doesn't collect these, so he just sets those off to the side. I pulled both of them up because they both have to be emptied. Now, um, as we come all the way down here, there is nobody fighting the monsters. So instead of uh, pulling them up, I add a coin to each one. So they become more lucrative. All right. So at this point, we're going to move on to another round. So starting at the top and moving down, let's move the market marker over. We reveal a new troll, two new droggers. All right. On our way down, we can collect up all of our meeples. So he actually gets five, and I have to leave this guy laying down here. Okay, I'm going to flip over a merchant card. If there were empty spaces here, I would flip those over. Um, so here, I'm going to refill these spots. And so now you can see it's more lucrative to go here or here. And then there's nothing to fill in here. As far as the AI is concerned, we will add those to the stack and then we'll pick these up and shuffle everything back together. Is that? Yeah, that's exactly the same. Okay, I did remember to flip it. All right, so that is all of the setup necessary between rounds, essentially. And you're gonna do that every single time. Um, let me just double check and make sure you don't refresh the Runesmith cards. Um, no, it doesn't seem to be that you do that. So, okay. I feel like sometimes some of those runes just really aren't that good, and so they just sit there the whole game and nobody touches them. Not worth it for just the two or three VP. Okay, so I have shuffled up the solo AI. Let's go ahead and go through one more round. Hopefully, they'll fight a monster and I can show you how that works, and then we'll push the rest of this video on to the extended playthrough. So, they did not take the first player marker from me, so I. Oh, let's see. I need some coins, but I also want to start building up my red monster army. So I am going to go ahead and secure the rights to fight this guy right here. All right. What's the solo way I doing? They are going, they love that stave church. So they're going here and they get one glory point. All right. I definitely want to make sure I have people. So I'm going to go here. Just get a diverse set smokehouse so they go here and they remove all of the food here it just goes back to the supply then me I've got two more actions I would really love to go up there yeah because I need to start building up my coins so I'm gonna go fight a Draugr with my action. They are also gonna go fight the Draugr, so they just have to choose the one I didn't go to. And then last but not least, I am gonna come here. I get to draw a destiny card, which for me is have the most troll cards at the end of the game. Okay, so you are supposed to. I always thought you didn't need to worry about the troll cards. So I will just pull the troll card out and set it in my victory pile, okay. All right, but I get to peek at one face down journey card. Obviously, I'm going to peek at this one, and it says all oh, quiet. So I know that I just need to put exactly the amount of food and warriors there that I think I need to roll my one success against the Fenner Club Cub. All right, so I'm done. Um, 
yeah, I've taken all my actions, so he's going to get two more. All right, monster left. Perfect. So normally he would pick highest value. He is still going to get it. He takes, he always takes the public longship with the 10 capacity that he gets for free because he doesn't have any money. Stinker. All right, so he does that. And then he's going to the swordsmith, which is going to take this die. All right, so he's done. We are good to go. We're going to move on to assign uh, the Vikings here. So let's just make sure we're going to go boom and boom. Probably not going to get any of these guys back. But so this one that was free has a capacity of five. I need to take one food to feed two dice. And I know that the weather is not going to mess with my food. So I can simply just put one there and I'll be able to make it. All right, so going through here, this one is just going to go into the discard pile because nobody defeated it, and that means both of us are going to get blamed for letting the troll run rampant. All right, then we go up here, and I want to fight the Draugr. I just need one success. All right, so I got two. Unfortunately, though, he hits me back for two, so I lose both of my guys take this guy back um, but I got two coins out of it one two and so this and hopefully with this is gonna get me the four I need I'm also getting five VP and uh, that's it and I have a blue card in my victory point pile he uh, just defeats this and gets the three VP one, two, three. And then we come down here. I reveal this card. It says all quiet. We knew it was going to say all quiet. And so this food is spent, but it was enough to feed these two warriors. So now these two warriors are going to have a go at it. Whew. Man, I've not been rolling well. Okay, so I hit him for one. I didn't get any blocks. So he defeats my two. I do get this coin. I also will get a glory token. And eight VP. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I have a red monster finally. Okay. Now he is uh, does goes through these steps. First, he looks at his journey card. Is it all quiet? It is not. So this means he doesn't get to automatically defeat the monster. In this case, since it was not all quiet, he has to roll a D four. All right. Anything but a four, he's going to defeat this monster. But since he had to deal with this, um, this just goes away. He actually only gets half, rounded up, mind you, of the VP for this monster. And then it just goes away. So he's only going to get seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I don't know how he figured out that that works, but it does seem to balance out the game well enough. So... All right, at this point, this guy is not gonna get touched. So he actually gets his second coin. So maybe I try and go here next time. All right, so um, moving into the refresh phase, we come back up here and we're gonna push this and we get a new troll, which I realize I need to start fighting some trolls. Two new joggers, both red, which is nice. Um, we're going to pull these back. It doesn't matter which spot they go in. I'm kind of all over the place here. I apologize. I'm not following my top down rule that I normally follow. Okay, so these guys each need something here. Boom, boom, boom. And a food. We flip over a new merchant card. Okay. Um, the Solo AI is going to get a good handful of cards this time. So now they have, are possibly going to purchase a new ship, and their opportunity to fight monsters is going to increase. So we remember we take everything back and we shuffle up this whole thing because the board's been cleared of all the worker placement spaces. So we don't want to say, all right, it's never going to go back to the Stave Church again. Um, like we've seen, it likes that Stave Church. So... We always shuffle these at the beginning of every round. All right, um, then we need to refill here. 
I need to refill here. All right, and that's it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, we are moving on to round three, but I'm gonna stop the video here. Uh, at this point, we have discussed how the solo AI works, what you need to do to, to get it up and running. We've discussed how to set up the game and that solo AI deck, and we've discussed how to play, uh, including how to involve the solo AI action cards. So at this point, you should be able to play the game. Um, all you do is simply play through eight rounds, and whichever player or dummy has the highest glory score at the end of the game wins. Um, the solo AI is definitely gonna jump ahead, but then at the end of the game, the only thing they score on is a, a long ship that they have purchased, which has points, for example, four for this one on it, and they're gonna reduce their um, by any blame. Whereas you get to look at your destiny cards, you get to look at any sets you may have created, and any additional um, glory, unspent glory tokens, coins, things like that. So uh, it's always going to happen that way that the solo AI is going to jump ahead, but you should be able to make a strong push at the end based on end game scoring. So it does make for an exciting ending to the game. If you want to see how this game ends, please be sure to check out the extended playthrough, which you can find right up here. Um, if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. And if you'd like this, uh, like to be um, part of more content like this in the future, please consider subscribing to the channel. Once again, thanks for watching. Have a great day.